proof that you can have both bad hair days and male pattern baldness. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan with another RV comparison. And I've done shades of these two things, but never head to head like this before. Partially because I don't know that they necessarily completely belong head to head, but they are both flirting in that sort of more premier, premium, upper end travel trailer category, especially as the floor plans get bigger. And that would be the Cougar Travel Trailers by Keystone and the Eagle HT series by Jayco. Um, I've done some similar things to this. I've done Cougar versus Whitehawk, which I think is a more direct comparison. But as the Cougar floor plans get bigger, they kind of start to bleed over and feel a little Eagle HT-ish. And HT has some mid-sized floor plans that definitely overlap with both Whitehawk and Cougar. Now I've done a separate Whitehawk versus Eagle HT video. That may also prove beneficial for you. I'll leave some links to that kind of stuff down here in the video description. Um, but again, because RVs, like people say, Josh, can you give me a list of an RV pecking order from top to bottom? No, I can't because it's not clear because one will do features over here and features over here and one does some of these and some of those. Like they never fully line up. If you look at a Venn diagram, you know, the circle diagrams where they intersect in the middle. These three brands that I mentioned, like White Hawk, Cougar Travel Trailers, Eagle HT, they definitely intersect in the middle, but they each have some unique space on their own. By the way, I'm trying a little bit different audio equipment today. I've had some wind issues that I've been trying to work out. Let me know how this sounds. Uh, I would appreciate that feedback. And along the way, between these two guys right here, let me know uh, kind of which brand overall you feel brings the greatest value. Because what you're going to see is... Um, I. Like my, my initial impression is the, the Cougar Travel Trailers, they're a really smart, high value, premium level trailer. They need some really good things. You're going to go uh, on a roughly equivalent floor plan about $4,000 additional to get to an Eagle HT. I'm going to show you some of the reasons why. But again, since this is not a clear, distinct, straightforward path between the two, there's going to be some things that the Cougar does that the Eagle doesn't do, or at least requires a lot of extra optional money on the Eagle to do what the Cougar's already doing. They're both very, very good products, and there's a reason sometimes people kind of, I think, trip over themselves when they're trying to figure out, which one of these do I get? Because I only want to do this once. That's what we're here for, folks. At Halid RV, we help you find your second camper the first time. So let's get in there. So first I want to just establish a couple kind of big hitter similarity qualities just because these are common uh, questions from RV owners. They are both, both of these brands are hot cold camp rated. Both Jayco and Keystone have independently tested uh, every single Cougar model, every single Eagle model in a uh, uh, like a Dometic hot cold testing chamber that is available. It's a very expensive process which is why a lot of brands don't do it. But your bigger, high-end, more established companies, uh, you know, your more premier brands, they actually take the time to test that stuff because they know that when you're spending this kind of money, you're not just a casual camper like like me. You know, I don't get to camp that often. Like this is, I'd love to have something like this. It's just beyond what I generally need. I'd take one if you gave it to me though. But I don't see anybody handing me the keys to the Cougar or Eagle or whatever. You get the idea. Um, so they're both hot cold uh, tested. Um, they're both warranted for full-time RVing. That's a really uncommon quality in travel trailers and they both share it. So that is kind of one of those areas where Cougar and Eagle HT, they do sort of overlap with one another. Actually, what's interesting is uh, Cougar beat Eagle HT to that punch. Cougar was doing it for about a year and a half first. Now, on the warranty note, I'm not doing my job if I don't mention the fact that Jayco has pretty much double the RV warranty of anybody else out there with the two plus three warranty. Although Keystone's uh, auto transferable first year warranty and they both have the same three year structural. It's, I think the warranty debate is largely a wash between these two. So what else, what unique major factors do these each have? And I think I'm actually going to keep this down to the really, really big hitter factors between the two because they both do the nuts and bolts and the nitty gritty and the little stuff very, very well. And I think one of the 
biggest big factors that comes on the Cougar travel trailers is they are standard automatic leveling, which is unbelievably uncommon in travel trailers. I think that's a really awesome indication of their status as a really premier level trailer. Almost no one is doing this, and Cougar had to negotiate some special things with their supplier to keep the cost of that down to where it fits a travel trailer budget and mindset in a sense. Now, keep in mind, the Cougar models that begin with the model designator of 22, like the 22 RBS, the 22 MLS, they do not have automatic leveling only because they're so physically small, that chassis cannot accept and properly utilize an automatic uh, leveling setup. Now, it's not that you can't do the same thing on an Eagle HT. You can upgrade that thing right there to power stabilizers. You can upgrade that uh, to full automatic leveling jacks, but you're paying for it on a product that is already several thousand more expensive on an equivalent floor plan. So what are you getting for that money? This is a huge part of it. What they're doing on the chassis level and this front area is a big part of the Eagle HT difference. You're getting, just like a fifth wheel, a drop frame storage compartment. It is much bigger, much taller, more uh, cubic foot of storage space. They're using more radiant barrier layering. You see in the top of that pass-through, that silvery stuff? It is going to help regulate temperature, so when you're laying in bed at night, it'll feel far more even and more comfortable. You're also getting, like a fifth wheel, a full privatized docking center over here. Now, the Cougars have a small little water docking station, but it ain't that. That is an area where they're definitely spending a little more money. And on a similar note, this front multi-purpose cargo function tray thing over here in the Eagle HCs, you just don't really tend to find that a lot in the travel trailer business. That is, I think, a really exceptional thing. By default, it's not really doing much. It's what you can do with it. They gave you a blank function space that most manufacturers just don't offer up there. Mostly, there's just a couple bars that you can lodge a couple batteries on. You've got room for batteries on this. you got room for batteries galore if you want to go bananas on this thing. You could do a small generator up front. You could add a cargo tray. There's a lot of extra things that you could do here. Now, a quick look at safety features here. We're looking at the back of a Cougar, and you see the white thing inside the tail light. That is reverse travel lighting. Just like your vehicle, when you shift into reverse, you're going to get this big, bright uh, burst of light. And until you see it in person, I can't do it justice by just talking about it. What I can tell you is it's it's extreme. It is it is not just like, oh, these lights are white instead of red. No, they're, they're bright. Thing is, though, they're doing that in response to the Eagle J Smart Lighting, which is now found on all Jayco Tobal RVs, trailers, uh, fifth wheels, whatever. So they have the reverse lighting, but they also have the signal and marker lighting. So if you shift on your left-hand turn signal, your driver's side turn signal, all of the lights on this side of the trailer blink along with that so that other people have an idea what you're doing. They don't do that over here. Um, one other... Uh, area where they're similar is they both do rear and side camera prep. By the way, the blinking lights on the J-Smart don't screw up your, your side camera if you install that. And it's one of those things that it matters, but it doesn't. If we're talking peace of mind and like feel good and uh, assurance, that's something Jayco does very well, better than almost any brand I've ever seen. And a good example of that, I'm pointing the wrong way. This is hard to do in a reverse view, by the way. <laughs> Um, the Goodyear Endurance Radials. If you watch my videos, you hear me yakety yak about them all the time. And it feels great. But here's the argument to be made. Why does a tire need to be rated for 87 miles per hour? Does it? You should not be towing that fast. You should not be. Thing is, Cougar's not using substandard tires. I know someone out there has certainly had a Cougar tire failure. Most tire failures are due to either improper inflation by the owner or road debris. Now, owner inflation could affect any tire. Road debris could affect any tire. Driving too fast? Eh, maybe. You know, that's something that if, if you like to be Johnny on the pedal, you just, you want to get your motor running and head out on the highway. Well, maybe those Goodyears feel better to you. But there's nothing wrong with like the uh, tires on Scooter. The Saloon tires that the Montana's ride in, they're not Goodyear's. They actually surpass Goodyear's in some tech specs. So the Goodyear tires feel good. They feel very good. Are they the be all end all? I guess that's for you to understand and, and for you to decide because it's not my money buying these things. It's your money. So where does 
your confidence and peace of mind lie. And if you don't know much about tires, but you want to do a lot of like you, you're like, I'm going to go full time on the road. I want to travel a ton. Don't you think tires are something you should probably do a little bit more looking into, regardless of which of these products you plan to buy? Don't just take my word for it. I'm just a guy. Do some of your own looking, build some of your own confidence, gain some of your own knowledge, and form your own opinions on that topic. Because tires are one of those topics like trucks where it's borderline like religious in level, man. There's some people that if you disagree with them, they will just bring fire and brimstone down upon you, brother. And kind of like the Goodyear tire discussion. Another one of those things where Jayco has spent a little bit more money, and it is one of the, the difference factors in that X thousand dollar difference between the Eagle and the Cougar that I mentioned, and that is their roof construction. Just like the Goodyear tires, if I'm talking about a Jayco, I'm talking about that Magnum Truss roof system. It's got the heaviest load rating in its class, and it does. And it's, what, what is it? It's rated for like 42 to 4,800 pounds. A ton. That sounds awesome. Here's the thing, though. Are you telling me that the like 3,000 pound load rating on that Cougar isn't sufficient? Because that's a tough argument to make. So there comes a point where you have to ask yourself, okay, is something maybe physically superior? Is it theoretically superior? Sure. Is it practically superior? I don't know. Again, that's a really tough one. That's a really tough one. and. I'm not trying to be dodgy. I don't know the answer to that question. I genuinely don't. If I were going to spend my money between these two things, I don't know if that would be a decision-making factor for me, but I'm not the one buying it. You are, potentially. So I want to give you all the information you can, let you make your decision. If you appreciate that kind of transparency, hit subscribe, follow along to us here at Halo RV, give our team a call. We'd love the chance to maybe chat it over with you a bit more. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, it's not so much of just which camper is the best. Which one's the best for you? How are you going to camp? Where are you going to go? How often? What's the weather going to be like? Those are factors we like to know. So, Because the more we know about you, the better off we can, we can provide a more personalized suggestion. You know? A couple more things on the outside here, and I don't even know how well this is going to translate since it's midday. Um, we're going to talk some smex appeal kind of things if you're looking at the front of these eagles they have these lightsaber glow beams you know for somebody like me who's a level 40 pokemon training nerd anything anything that looks like a lightsaber i think is fun so they, they look very cool they're orange so they're dot regulated and you've got these extra docking lights right here so at night you have a really clear idea of what you're doing cougars got a couple of their own cool things though so they've got normal like led lights the difference here versus glow beams is you can see like blah 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 you can see individual lights through that thing but east built cougars indiana built cougars like supplied here at halo rv have that really awesome looking nose cap that is actually not found on the west coast produced cougars by the way because they don't have a windshield supplier like they do in northern indiana for the cougars that we get that most of the country gets so it'll depend a little bit on dealer and region here so <clears throat> We got to talk that real quick. It gives it eye appeal. I I personally feel, and again, this is a bit of my personal opinion, that windshield, oh my good gravy. Does that look good? Especially in something like the, the Jayco Whitehawk. But you notice the Eagle doesn't do it. Eagle just doesn't do windshields, really, as a rule. I'm not really aware of any Eagle that does. One of their big reasons is that, especially in a travel trailer, that tends to be right above the bed. And as good as, there it is, that looks, this is hard. <laughs> um, it's a giant thermal hole in the wall. It's basically, well, it's not even an R1. Windows aren't even an R1, by the way. Now there's a shade you can pull down that will help dramatically. You could stuff a pillow up in there, but at that stage, what good is a windshield other than just eye candy? And you could say, well, Eagle looks good enough as it is. So if the windshield is or is not a good factor, really depends on you, what you plan to do and how you plan to camp. But my experience has been a lot of first time RVers don't realize that there is a significant insulation loss in that front wall with the addition of a windshield. So I wanted to take a second to point that out. <laughs> Gosh, it looks good, doesn't it? And one last thing before we step inside, they're both using the nice Moride stable steps. Uh, they're both using the updated generation. They have the like quick, easy extend retract legs instead of the, the push pull pins, which, ah, thank you both for doing that. 
And in case you didn't know what I was talking about, this is what I'm talking about. That little silver pin, instead of the, the pegs that you used to have to push through these, you can just hit the button, it'll like slide itself in. You might have to push it through manually a little bit. Then, uh, when you reach your destination, you just pull the leg out physically, and it's like a drawbridge. It'll go click, 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 until you hit the link that you want, and then it's locked in place. The other thing is, Eagle's using like a luxury fifth wheel zero G stable step, and even more than that, they've got that extra large handle on here, two handles that's a eagle doing eagle things right there so you've always got something to hold on to again this costs more money but in terms of just feature with no money involved eagle takes the w on that one now inside here um i'm inside the cougar right now by the way i want to kind of use this as like the the base standard and then we'll look at a couple of areas that the Cougar sticks out and then the areas where the Eagle HT sticks out. So they will both have the same kind of refrigerator options. They both have an eight cubic foot two-way gas electric fridge. They can both be upgraded to one of those nice larger uh, 12 volt DC compress uh, compression fridges. They both have things like stainless sinks, uh, sealed edge countertops, lots of outlets, great lighting package. They both have the same 15,000 BTU Coleman quiet air conditioner standard. They're both 50 amp standard. Um, they have effectively very comparable, you could say a wash in terms of uh, uh, furniture. Real quick note, this Cougar that, where am I at? There we go. <laughs> this is not easy. Uh, this Cougar that we're looking at has carpet in the slide floor. This is an anomaly. Um, Cougars produced have carpetless slide floors. Eagle HT travel trailers, actually any Jayco laminated travel trailer has carpetless slide flooring. This one was built during a severe material shortage, it did have to be built with just a little strip of carpet in the slide itself. You'll see that the rest of the, the flooring is carpetless. But ignoring this RV, both uh, all Eagle and all Cougar travel trailers will be carpetless. They have like effectively the same kind of theater seating and stuff like that. So what are the kind of widgets and whiz bangs that the Cougars have that the Eagles don't? Well, two of them actually have to do with that air conditioning system that we mentioned briefly but not the air conditioner itself, rather the ducting. So first of all, something that you can't see, it's a Keystone exclusive innovation, is they have this um, air conditioning duct linking, uh, almost like how you link Lego blocks together in a sense. But what it will do is, think of your air conditioning, it kind of comes through like a foam and foil line cereal box. Well, over time, it can kind of start to sag a little bit. And when it does that, as it sags, it's not getting as much airflow as when it was brand new. So that duct linking helps prevent that. So that if you own this Cougar in year 10, it'll still have great airflow through the air conditioner. Another thing that they've gone to is this, like, let me get you a good angle on it, hurricane cyclone looking kind of air duct system. I won't lie, I don't fully understand the science behind it. What I do know is that Keystone's engineering department, which I've personally visited, those guys are so smart. They like, they know they they're like, oh, it just does this because of this induction. And I'm like, I don't know what half of them words mean. Like, they make me feel so so dumb. Um, and I think that's awesome. I love that they have those kind of smart people working for them. The idea though is that kind of aerofoil sort of system creates a little bit of a vortex that sucks more air out of that duct and gets more of that cold air down here into the living room, and. Anytime we can accomplish more cold air coming out of the in air conditioner, well, it certainly makes a lot of sense to me. Now, if we talk the tech package, this is another one of those things, kind of like the automatic leveling, that the Cougar does better by default. You can option into an Eagle HT, but you're paying extra for it. So, by default, Cougar has a little more advanced tech package. It's the uh, in-command system. You can control more things with it, basically. Um, I also really like the fact that it has like a all centralized wiring center that you just don't usually find even in big bad fifth wheels. And that's this thing right here. So a uh, couple cool things about this, and this is definitely an area where Keystone as a whole doesn't get the credit they deserve. First of all, Keystone was the first manufacturer of towable RVs to fully color code every wire in this thing. That's still not an industry standard. Most brands still don't do that. And I noticed as soon as they started doing that, not that we ever had a high occurrence of it, but like basically zero wiring issues from Keystone because even the people on the production line can see what they're doing. 
Um, the uh, other thing is that all the wiring comes in like, bang, one spot. So, God forbid you do need to get to it or trace something down. It's far, far easier. It's way less labor intensive. It gets you back on the road faster. Also, they're not using a conventional fuse box. They're using all these little like automotive bus style fuses, which are way more heavy duty and frankly, probably easier to get exchanged uh, because you can go to like any automotive service center and get these things anytime. The other neat thing about it is let's say you're like, I don't want to go through the touch panel and operate my slides and awnings and everything else. There's a little dial right over here where if you want to select the device you want to open a motor say awning slide jacks you can select that open and close it right from there so let's say something went really haywire or your kid invites a friend who smashes your touch panel and your phone won't sync to it anymore you still have a button you can push open close and continue to camp until you can get her worked on replaced fixed whatevs so what's Eagle got? And again, it comes down to some important differentiating factors. Little thing, um, in both campers, the kitchen countertops are a sealed edge thermal foil. In the Eagle HT, the dining table remains that way as well, unless you go to the freestanding table and chairs, in which case you get wooden out of both. In that note though, when you do go to the freestanding table and chairs in an Eagle HT, you get the two plus two chair range. I feel like Chuck Woolery. You, got, you remember the love connection, guys? Chuck is like, we'll be back in two and two. Do you know what he was talking about? The commercial breaks on that show were two minutes and two seconds long. I timed it once. Um, I'm kind of weird like that. Anyway, <laughs> that's what he was talking about. So, but that's a little difference. A major factor here though, it's what's going on up top. It's funny how they both have some different things going on up top. A Cougar has a six and a half foot sidewall. They have a very nice rounded vaulted ceiling to give me some more headroom to make it feel larger. Eagle HT does a different though. Instead of six and a half, they're not even six nine. They're a full seven foot to the ceiling. You see how much room's above my head here? Seven foot tall ceilings. If you're a really tall person, you're gonna like being in the shower of an Eagle HT a lot better than almost any travel trailer out there. Another thing, they're both using the same air conditioner, but in a Jayco Eagle HT, you're getting the whisper ducted uh, Helix air system. It is quieter still without losing airflow. It's a nice thing. Now that will be located only in the living room of an Eagle HT. If you add an optional second air conditioner, it'll still be a quieter Coleman 15,000 BTU air conditioner. It will not be a whisper ducted air system though. Optional air uh, units are hard to make whisper ducted effectively. So taller ceiling means more space overall, but like bigger cabinetry and just a larger general feel. Now, one other thing I want to really look at here is what's going on in the bedroom. Now, if you look at just this, and if we would have looked at the bedroom of a Cougar, in both cases, you're seeing a 70 by 80 king bed. So that seems like a wash. I'm going to give a little nod to Eagle HT on this one though, but just, just by a frog's hair, you know, a hen's tooth, you get the idea. Um, this is optional. Standard is still a 60 by 80 queen. I like that they give you the option. Here's the thing though, at Halid RV, we tend to still reserve the queen beds for a white hawk. We tend to put the, the bigger bed in the bigger trailer, the Eagle HT. So I don't know that it's really that significant of a bonus. I think that there are some people who would prefer the extra room to walk around a queen bed, but I think that once you're in the Eagle HT budget, I feel and I have found from feedback more people like the idea of a bigger king bed. Um, you tend to have more people spending more time in the trailer. You've got more pets in this thing. So it's something that just kind of feels right. Now the bathroom of an Eagle HT is another area where I give them the nod. I think that they've done a little more in their bathroom. So let's start right up top. Look at that bath vent fan. It's not like one of those giant Max Air type fans, but it's a treated Max Air fan. Um, so basically it has its own built-in rain prevention kind of cover on it that you can open and close from inside the RV, which is nice. And again, that taller ceiling really does have a nice effect here in the bathroom to give you some more room there. 
Uh, the uh, They're both going to use nicer foot flush stools, nice countertops in the bathrooms. But there's a couple other little nicety details, like the backlit morning mirror here that you get in the in a lot of the Jayco's, but here in the Eagle series. And then that little Labatt blue light above the shower, going to give you a nice little night light so that you can see uh, what you're doing in the evening hours without tripping over everything. Very nice for kiddos and for guests who maybe just aren't familiar with your camper. Now the lights are off because I had to run back out here because I kind of forgot to talk about this the first time. Well, let's talk decors. So all you've seen so far of both Eagle and Cougar is that uh, what Eagle calls modern farmhouse decor, I think Cougar calls driftwood. Basically a lot of white-ish tone woodwork. Eagle has kind of grayish furniture. Cougar has a little bit more brownish, but kind of grayish furniture. Um, kind of like the bed situation. I give a very slight nod to Eagle in this regard because if you notice, they do give us an alternative decor. It's called American Craftsman. It's got, um, what's interesting is the parts of this that are dark brown, the entertainment center, some of that cabinetry space, that will remain the same color. But the stuff that we're looking at that's that distressed white, it'll turn to a very warm, welcoming brown, but still a little bit on the lighter side, not real dark and impressive. So you do get some decor options on an Eagle HT. Now, where we tend to be almost exclusively king beds for anything in stock on an Eagle HT travel trailer at Haylitz or fifth wheel at this point, because that's now available, by the way. I'll do a separate video on the fifth wheels, though. Um, we will do a little bit of the uh, American Craftsman decor here. We do about two farmhouses to one Craftsman decor, but we do like to bring both in stock. So if you want to see a comparison, let us know. And it occurred to me on the way out of the RV, there was one other thing on the outside of the RV I missed that is a definite no question about it better feature on the eagle ht but it's part of the extra money that you're spending on an eagle ht remember i keep talking about that i know it's annoying but it's important to always keep that perspective and that is the suspension treatment an eagle ht is uncommon in the world of travel trailers and that they give you the exact same moride cre 3000 rubber shock dampening suspension system as a big bad fifth wheel same thing as like a north point uh luxury fifth wheel you're getting here you just don't tend to find that on travel trailers and you might go, why? And the shorter answer is because unfortunately, not enough prospective buyers recognize the value in that. There's also a lot of travel trailer buyers who tend to camp far, far more casually and they tow far, far less and they don't need that as much. So that's money that designers don't tend to bury into a product that a lot of people wouldn't understand or wouldn't take advantage of because really, I don't always like this answer, but whenever the question is why do they or why don't they do something, it's because that's what does or doesn't sell the camper. And there is no more complicated answer than that. So I think we pretty much covered it. What's up, Aaron? Hey, Josh, how's it going? Going good. We're definitely not doing this in a scripted fashion. <laughs> so what are you doing? Actually, I'm comparing Eagle HT travel trailers and Cougars here at Halet RV. Nice. Did you talk about sidewall thickness? No. Did you talk about uh, the air conditioning with the ducts and how some can move and some can't? I'll be right back. <sighs> Did you talk about the duct work? Did you talk about the walls? No, I didn't talk about the duct work and the walls. Why do you think I'm running back out here? Okay. So, uh, here. How did you? I just want to make sure you're doing it right. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Adventure Aaron, you may remember him uh, from some previous videos. Aaron, could you please fill the people in where uh, apparently I fell short? Well, Josh, <laughs> um, on our Eagle here, we have about an inch and a half thick sidewall. On our Cougar, we're going to have about a two inch thick sidewall. What that's going to do is this one is temperature rated, the Eagle, from zero to 100 degrees. This one, the Cougar, is now temperature rated from zero to 110 degrees. So that's gonna make a huge factor for our uh, Southern folks down in Texas and Arizona. The Eagle is gonna have uh, air conditioning ducts that you can actually turn and have them adjust where you want that air to be directed. The Cougar is not. Now the reason why the Cougar is not is because they have this racetrack vortex style air conditioning that's gonna help cool that unit. So that's something that they think you're not gonna really need because they've done it in all of their ducting in, uh, in the ceiling. And uh, I'm gonna let Josh finish in with the rest of it. Well, I, I tell you what, folks, I'm pretty good, but there's some other folks here that are just as good and if not better in some ways. So if you have any questions, as you can see, I'm not the only guy here that knows my way around these. One of the benefits of working with us at Halet RV, uh, 
We're factory trained. We are right around the corner from where this stuff is built. Kind of like that. Sometimes you'll just, the one person will remember something, the other one doesn't. Thank you, Aaron. No problem, Josh. <laughs> okay, so here's what Smarty McNowledge Pants is talking about in relation to their air conditioning systems. Uh, any Jayco uh, towable RV with a centrally ducted system will have this. It's called being both vented and louvered. You can turn and close each vent individually to have full control over your air system. Now that does mean that by doing so you could slightly reduce the total overall airflow in the uh, RV. Uh, basically it'll be kind of like your car. Where if I close that vent, the other two are going to kind of pick up the slack and you're going to get a little bit more air bleeding out of those. Now, I've likely missed a couple features. So if I have missed anything or if you have extra questions or anything like that, leave us a little comment. Let us know. I'll do my best to kind of fill in the blanks and try to be as fair and objective as I can. One of the nice things about being a very multi-branded store like this is that when I'm doing these comparisons, I can be really brutally cutting fair between the two. This is why I don't do comparisons of RVs that we don't carry at Haylet RV. Because I don't feel I can do it from an unbiased position. Um, anybody in this industry who says they're completely unbiased, they're not. <laughs> at the end of the day, we are all working to earn your business. The difference is I'd rather do that through decency, straightforward information, and transparency. We are family owned and operated. I am one of Mr. Haylet's sons. That is not just our business name on that bumper sticker that leaves here. That is my family name on every one of these campers that leaves here. And I will do my best to always represent myself, my family, and all of our staff to the best of our ability. And if I meet you at Walmart and you're buying lettuce, I ain't going to duck down the dog food aisle because I want to hide from you. I'm going to come up. I'm going to meet you square in the eyes. I'm going to be like, hey, Carol, whoever, how you doing? You know, you got any problems? You let me know. I want you to know you can do that with us here at Halet RV. And if that sounds good, if you appreciate this information, if there's something else I can leave you a link to or answer, just let us know, guys. We sure appreciate it. And always, as always, keep the comments coming. Let me know. Are you, you know, hashtag Eagle, hashtag Cougar? Which, which brand speaks a little bit more loudly to you? I'd love to know what and why which factors kind of appeal to you. If you'd like to see an improvement on one brand or the other, give us that kind of feedback too. And short of that, you know they're for sale too. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm not gonna lie, we do need to earn your business to keep these videos rolling from Halet RV. And I don't care where you live. I don't care where you live. If you give us a fair chance, we earn people's business from a long way away all the time, ladies and gentlemen. So as always, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. And they do this through like almost all their, well, pretty much all their uh, duct, air duct. <laughs>